Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Of course, we're also simulcasting tonight on No Borders Radio, right here at TammyPowerman.org. And tonight, I've got a special guest, of course, Clint Richardson from Corporation Nation. Do I have you on, Clint? Oh, it says he's still bubbling. So we'll have Clint with us as soon as I can get the connection uh, fixed. I hope that we're not going to be doing this. Uh, let's see here. For the night. Um, it could be how I... how I did this. Um, so for now, um, this is us. Uh, two chickens. <laughs> My grandma used to say that and um, gosh, she was just the cutest. And uh, boy, it's been a long uh, few years here. Um, and I'm seeing Clint come on, so let's get this party started. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, nope, still bubbling. Are you there, Clint? Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm technically challenged. Do I have you, Clint? You do. I thank goodness. Oh, I'm so technically challenged. It's not even funny. And then uh, they've been trying to teach me all these taggy things lately. And I'm sure that you know, without patience, I'm sure that uh, everybody goes nuts around me because I'm not uh, good with technical stuff at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh. How are you? Oh, good. You did something right. You got us all here. Yep. Here we are. Um. Oh my goodness, everything's happening. I mean, this, uh, all of these things in Gaza and Israel, uh, we're, we're witnessing just absolute revelation. I, I know that in my heart. And um, man, the, the humanity is standing up for Gaza. Humanity is standing up against corporate governance. Humanity is now standing up for humanity. And it, this is profound. What are you seeing? I have, I have a really bad echo, by the way. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It's gone. Um, I kind of see... I still see people going to the mall. I mean, I see I see some people, but I, I don't see a revolution quite yet. A revolution of the mind, anyway. Well, and, and maybe that's coming. Um... You know, I'm, I'm praying and praying that the indoctrination just lifts. You know, as it's written in Revelation, it, it's written that uh, one day it's there and, and the next day it's gone. And in and, and one hour, uh, this should come upon the generation. And, um, you know, I, I, in my heart, I know that that hour is here. I mean, we're seeing such, such amazing things. I sure hope that's I sure hope that's the case, but I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of, of thinking that in your circle. You know what I mean? Right. 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 So you gotta be you gotta be. I know a lot of people like your typical Alex Jones listener, or you know, they truly believe that they are doing something by handing out Alex Jones DVDs. Uh, when in reality, no, not so much. Right, and and it talks about the useful idiots in Revelation uh, 1 and 2. John directly speaks to uh, those that are innocent. And he says, look, you know, I've got some things against you. I love you, but I've still got some things against you because you're going this way or you're going that way. And um, again, when the revelation occurs, it's all at once. It, you know, and... and um, Watching the news coming down, it looks like people, human beings, are, you know, more and more and more aware. And that's the requirement. The requirement is for them to step away from that false god, the false idols, the, um, 
you know, Jezebel itself, the media, that that thing was uh, it just horrifyingly feeding them uh, uh, to the thing. You know, Jezebel is is a very, very, very slick mistress. It's true. And um, it looks like they're not relying on the media as an influence. And now, you know, as a source of information, they're being more selective in what they're, you know, consuming. What What do you think um, on that? Because I've watched, you know, even your ratings. I've watched your ratings go up, and that means that humanity is being more selective. They're using their discretion in what they're listening to. And I have watched, you know, Alex Jones' ratings go down. I have watched today, Sean Hannity, he went, he went nuts on one of his guests. I was really surprised to see that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I wasn't. That's that's the way they do it. Uh, they don't let him talk. It's, I mean, that's that's the that's the same tactic that they use every time they don't want someone to talk. Right, but he, but he couldn't get, get over it. I mean, it, it wasn't... You know, normally if a guest is, is you know, uh, yelled at or whatever, then the guest, you know, eventually it it uh, speaks the word of the host because it doesn't want to be excommunicated. That's, a, that's a, um, the word I was looking for, but uh, sure. that didn't happen. That didn't happen, and he didn't take up the title of, of uh, false flag. That was beautiful to see that a Palestinian, you know, he, he couldn't answer that question because he's not Hamas. Hamas is, you know, a, a rebel agency. It's not anything to do with Palestinians. Well, I gotta say, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, and I hate to sound de de defeating uh, at all, but I truly believe in. Well, I look at the, I look at the quotes from the from Huxley. I look at quotes from uh, was it Rudolf Steiner? I think I look at these quotes from long, long ago that basically say, um, you know, that in the future, we will be able to vaccinate, <clears throat> uh, literally inoculate people and get rid of their empathy, right. uh, get, get rid of their uh, humanity, if you will. Absolutely. Um, and I truly believe that that has already happened. Absolutely. So for me to talk about a revolution, um, at this point, I can only talk about individuals having having a relative re revelatory uh, a, a change in their in their hearts and minds. I can't I can't say it about the human population, but I can say it about individuals, which is which is what I sort of base my my whole uh, <laughs> thesis on, if you will, is to talk to individuals and individuals only, because there will never be. And never has been in the history of man uh, and government uh, a, a, an actual free government that wasn't based on violence, that wasn't based on you know c you know human trafficking, okay. the ancient system of pledging. I just don't think that that is going to happen. But I do think that there are a select few people who have not been inundated, indoctrinated, or vaccinated to the point where they can actually have that that thing we're talking about. Well, originally, um, there was a, a form of, uh, quote, governance before the attorney came into play uh, with the 100 courts and the courts of elite. Uh, they were governed by the manorial houses. And in this, the sovereign houses would, of course, appoint the lords and the um, court elite, the court baron itself. And everything was maintained as to humanity. It was, it was for the well-being of humanity, the general welfare of humanity. And that was attempted again at the Constitution, the contract with the House of Lords and Congress. Congress had come in and said, we're going to formulate uh, basically the court baron, the uh, court of hundreds, and uh, we're going to be that house. And they decided to promote democratic theory once again as they were Rome. They were just re-establishing Rome and they got one over on the House of Lords for a very long time until we came in as the houses and we said no, nope, we're not going to do this, we're not going to have representation, we're not going to have all of this uh, nonsense. They are embezzling from the House of Lords. We were able to evidence this to the House of Lords 
and from the people they were also embezzling from humanity itself and trafficking of course under democratic theory which is what that is a demo means people and kratis means to control or possess and so in a polycratic society which means to control or possess many this is what happens and the human trafficking exists and it goes on and on and on until somebody holds it accountable and that's what happened when we came in with the houses uh, we said no we're not going to do this and we're not going to be representing humanity we're going to speak the word of humanity and uh, that is what we're seeing right now in Gaza we're seeing this in Israel and as well as in Russia you know Putin is coming out against the United States Incorporated the United States Incorporated is trying to blame Putin for what Congress just did shooting that uh, plane MH17 out of the air and blaming it on Congress or uh, Putin this is all in the action of Heigl, but the citizenry, the, the humanity, is not buying these things. And that, to me, is the most profound, because if they were buying it, then that system would still exist. Now that they're not buying it, uh, we're watching now as, you know, uh, Obama, he thought he had it all going good. And now he's, you know, he's out golfing while there's hungry and homeless in quote his country that he's supposed to be representing and speaking on behalf of uh, the uh, statistics on homeless veterans alone are absolutely abhorrent because they, they ran out and served for this uh, blaspheme and um, in this it only takes humanity to realize what's going on and not to patronize that thing and I believe that is what is occurring now. Well, I, I, I think that there's, again, this sort of indoctrination aspect. Because, you know, I was, I'm making a documentary right now. And I was pulling up some of the, just to use as an example, I was pulling up the uh, Bundy Ranch incident. Right. And what, what was being said there. And, um, you know, I see these people, they're telling the federal agents, the BLM, they're telling those, those people to get off the state land right in fact when in fact that's not <laughs> not state land right. actually uh, um it's actually federal land and it does not belong to the state of Nevada. yet they believe that and then in the background you see all these american flags right so they're they're literally promoting the war flag they're promoting the united states flag which is the symbol of piracy absolutely and it's it's a symbol of i mean if you read the nevada state constitution uh, it's very, very clear in Section 2 Absolutely. that the United States at any time can come in and beat the heads of anybody that disagrees with the United States. It, there is no secession. There is no, None of that is, is available well, that's the Civil what, War. That's what secession is. It's to take over the states. And that means also the national state as well. And when the BLM is coming in, that is through the Reclamation Acts. 1974 Reclamation Act. So the federal government back in 1802, it began allowing the states to have a form of governance. And in these acts of enablement, it said, okay, your corporation under the federal state, which is, of course, and, and I'll put it all, all out on the line, that is the federal state, which is the Reichstag, and the national state, which is the Reichsrat, that acts on, the, on behalf of the Reichstag. Germany is a corporation located in the District of Columbia, the Federal Republic of Germany. So you have the Reichstag now reclaiming the Reichsrat and taking those lands back through the Bureau of Land Management. Now, if the sheeple agree with Nazi Germany here, reclaiming all of the land, and they do not take up their authority, Nazi Germany continues to occur. It never ended. It continues to occur. Congress has always been, quote, Germany. They reestablished Rome back in 1648 with the Treaty of Westphalia. And in this alliance, Rome is called Germany. Rome is called the Corporation of Israel. Rome is called the Corporation of Hamas and Al-Qaeda and uh, Boko Haram. Those are all arms and extensions of Congress. They're all located in the District of Columbia since 1871 with that act of enablement. They're also located in the original 13 colonies. So there's par parts and, and parcels of Israel located in New Hampshire and there's parts of Israel located in Delaware. It depends on who is uh, trading what. 
perhaps it's human resources or it could be um, another commodity outside of human resources. But that type of governance has to stop. Politics is elite, unlawful on its face. That is the practice of law. That's not the action or law enforcement of the actual public law, which is, means do no harm. The practice of law is to human traffic. Well, I, I have this I have this particular little sort of uh, fantasy of mine that I like to put forward. You know, because I, 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 people again, it, it's this there's this uh, this illusion, this barrier of illusionary, uh, you know, based paint called the patriot mythology, whatever you want to call it. You know, we've been taught that we have a quote unquote representative government, and we believe that representation is a good thing. In other words, that uh, it makes it sound like we are part of the process, right? right. So, so what do we do, man? We <laughs> we're foolish enough to go to the voting polls, at least 50, at least like fifty percent of us, anyway, hmm. um, and, uh, and and vote for a representative. That's the extent of the rights of a citizen that is it that's all you get is a vote for a person that is going to take the place as a member of congress now a member of congress when you say of that means belonging to right these people don't represent the state they represent the united states the state is just a franchise of the united states just like a mcdonald's absolutely so so here's my here's my little dream the people will actually wake up to you, okay? Now, a representative, well, first of all, let me just say this. We live in a dictatorship. Absolutely. Sure and simple. There is no denying that when you understand the facts. Question is, what does it mean? What is a dictator? Well, let's not define what a dictator is. Let's find what to, uh, to dictate, the action of dictating is. Uh, Black's Law, dictate. Uh, this is first edition to order or instruct what is to be said or written to pronounce word by word what is meant to be written by another so what do your representatives do all 538 of them they go to they go to they go to washington dc where they actually have immunity absolute immunity from crime basically they get together in a foreign state and they write the law they 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 talk about it they muse about it they they write it, uh, they write a draft, they vote for it, and then they make it official and it goes in the books. That is a dictatorship. Oh, no, no, it can't be a dictatorship because there's 536 or 38 of them. No, a dictator, there's, there's nothing that says a dictator is a single individual. Right, and it you is a body. A it, it is one body. It's called a body politic. Exactly, exactly. And so now, imagine... If just this one thing could change, and it's I, tough. It's tough to. It's tough to have to rely on the voting public, which is always in history, always but un, uneducated body of, of individuals uh, that that can be dangerous. However, imagine if these people, these representatives, were instead delegates. Oh, what's a delegate? Hey, wait a minute. You take a delegate. Same thing as a representative, except he goes gets together with his 538 compatriots and they uh, talk about it and they say well okay we're gonna have to answer to the people whereas we don't as a representative but as a dictator or as a as a delegate we're only gonna be able to make a draft of the law and then we're gonna have to put it to the people for vote oh well, my god and oh that would be horrible 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 right. can you imagine if can you imagine a 2,000 page health care bill being presented to the people for a vote, it would never pass. Right, and and I'll start out with the definition of election out of Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, 2004. Number one, the exercise of a choice, especially the act of choosing from several possible rights or remedies in a way that precludes the use of other rights or remedies. The taxpayer's election to file jointly instead of separately. See election of remedies. Number two, the doctrine by which a person is compelled, compelled to choose between accepting a benefit under a legal instrument and retaining some property right to which the person is already entitled. Semicolon, an obligation imposed on a party to choose between alternative rights or claims so that the party is entitled to joy, enjoy only one. 
Now, under a delegation, for example, you're still ask, asking somebody to, um, you're delegating your authority, you're vesting power in something. However, in a clerical system, a clerk or clergy only speaks the word of its um, holder, such as humanity. And so you're not delegating any authority, you're not vesting any authority, you're not vesting any power, and you're not giving up any rights or remedies. You're actually, um, let's say, electing a clerk to only speak your word. It's all the way outside of delegation or vesting power. And that's what Jesus said, divest yourself of all that possesses you. Get rid of all of that garbage and speak the word of each other. We're all one voice. And that's the uh, bottom line. The foundation is universe. We're all the universe, one voice. And in a cler clerical position or from a clerical standpoint, that voice is made known. And that's what it says in Revelation. That's when Revelation occurs. When the Lamb, which is humanity in total, has been tortured long enough and it finally realizes what's written in the book and it's able to open that book, it marries the clerk and that clerk becomes the sword, the voice, the word, the written instruments, the written documentation of that word and it doesn't change. Well, can you imagine if, uh, if, if, if pastors and ministers of all these corporate churches out there actually started to <laughs> explaining the Bible in, in its legal terms? Can you, can you imagine if the church actually told people, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Right. You're, you're participating in something that's wholly against what the Bible says. You're respecting a status. You're respecting a person. You're acting as a person. You're, you're praying in groups, which is strictly basically forbidden. Um, you're doing so. You're doing charity not for the sake of charity. You are doing charity because you're, you're <laughs> here. We call them the, the, the Mormon mafia is watching. Absolutely. You know? You're only doing charity because you're going to get applause, which is what it says in the Bible. Yeah, can you imagine if preachers actually started preaching the law of the Bible instead of just the fundamentalist uh, 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 anthropomorphism of the Bible? I mean, I can't imagine how quickly things would change if that were the case. Absolutely, because they're acting as attorneys. To attorney means to pay homage to another Lord God. It does not mean to pay homage to the God, which is humanity. And those, those uh, blasphemes, these attorneys that are priests, these attorneys that are false uh, Jews, false words, false prophets, Jezebel, it's been named as Jezebel, Delilah, Eve, Lilith, Judas, all of these things. If that was gone, humanity would be whole as one and no longer under representation which is the most horrifying thing ever because being represented re represented humanity has lost itself it's lost each other and it's so divided you know i was i was reading <clears throat> i love the the webster's 1828 dictionary because it's um, mostly because it it goes through goes through the conversational or the common usage it goes through the legal usage and then it compares that to scripture so it's like, a, it's like this sort of complete, wonderful little book. And in there were three words. Three words that I was really surprised to read. Um, they are anthropomorphite, which was a noun, a name in other words, uh, referring to man and form. In other words, the form of man. One who believes a human form in the supreme being. A sect of ancient heretics are called anthropomorphites. Anthropomorphous is an adjective belonging to that which has the form of man having the figure of resemblance to man. And then anthropomorphism, which is a noun or a name, uh, the heresy of the anthropomorphites. Right. Now you tell me, uh, Tammy, is not every religion out there an anthropomorphite? Absolutely, because originally God created everything and called it good. And this includes everything that creepeth. 
when you go back into the Greek, into the Greek, uh, Anthropo was a higher thinking being that creeps. That's everything that creepeth, and it was good. Enir is the uh, word for man in Greek. A man, of course, is a legal creation. But prior to taking up names and titles, or the action of nomenclature, to be grabbed and, and named, um, man was anthropo. He was God. And, um, of course, he bought concepts from the tree of knowledge. That is the thing that kills. And the tree of knowledge is not something that provides us with apples, as the priests have presented. Uh, the tree of knowledge breeds and bears only fruit that are called concepts or t something taken up in the mind. Yeah, I, I, really, I can really see that too because you have, you have these PhDs and these MDs and these, uh, you know, graduates of the university system, which, by the way, you know, is probably the, the most evil system out there. We, uh, most of the really bad medical research, um, all the transhuman and cloning and chemtrails and everything else is first happening in the university system. Right. And uh, you see these people around, I, I, I watch people and I listen to them talk and I listen to the radio and, and, and there are people that memorize the entire stats of a baseball team. There are people that... Uh, you know, they, they can they can spout off the most useless information that has nothing to do with the natural realm, nothing to do with anything important, and that has been uh, now created as knowledge. It's been the concept of knowledge, true carnal good knowledge, has been morphed into into this useless information. Right. PhDs and right. and uh, you know your bachelor's degree. What are they getting? They're getting a general education well when you look at the word general it means vulgar it means the lowest common denominator the most uh, vile of, of 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 classes or states you know the, the common is the same word uh, right. it's, it's pretty amazing when you when you think of it that way so the tree of knowledge has turned into the university system if you ask me absolutely and, and it stems from science science is not a uh, theory or law, science is, means to grasp, sire means to grasp in Latin, and so the action of grasping such knowledge, um, and instead of actually uh, being in a relative state and uh, observing knowledge, if you will, uh, or walking along in a walk and learning from experience, now we're taking up concepts through science. That's, that's not gnosis. Gnosis is, is the uh, taking up of knowledge through experience. And, and this is how we've been walked away from everything that we are into what a corporation requires of humanity um, in its various states of being. Uh, individual, man, you know, female, male, which stems from uh, the gender, stemming from the word genus. Everything has been signified as a stock option in a corporation, as long as you take up those titles and you take up those um, concepts of science and you take up the concept, biology, bi means life. Ology simply means the thought of, you know, and, and you have all of these idea ologies. What the heck? That is thinking of thought. That Those are thoughts of thought. It, it's taking up, you know, not only the first concept, but you're taking up now concepts that derive from the original concept and everything is a cartoon it's not a relative state until you divest then and that's the requirement of all humanity divest yourself of all the possesses you stop being filled up with these constitutional theories of science and um again uh, as germany has moved along throughout history or rome whatever you want to call it 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 requires that the upper levels, the top doctors, the teachers, everything are removed from existence. Those that know, those that have the actual relative knowledge. And those happen to be the ones that are educated at Harvard, the ones who are educated at Yale, the ones who are educated at the highest levels. They remove that from existence or they buy it off. Um, they threaten it, they know that there's a criminal element, so they hold stuff over its head. Uh, whatever it takes to uh, control the masses, it has done up until now. Because I, 
you know, uh, in a, from a personal standpoint, you know, I've known so many PhDs, I've known so many masters, I've known so many, whatever, it doesn't matter what the title is. And each one, as the education uh, increases, their actual knowledge base or gnosis decreases exponentially. And so that the higher the, the education, the more indoctrinated they are. And, and Bo and I talk about this a lot. Um, you know, I would have rather have a dropout coming to us than I would have a PhD coming to me because they're so egotistical. They want to hold on to all of those concepts that they've been grasping, regardless of, of where they came from, because they, you know, they believe they're right. Believe stems from the word from be left, to be gone from the self. So in all of these beliefs, they're gone, actually gone, but they cannot see it for the ego or the super ego or the id, because those are indoctrinated states as well. So you've got all of these created states stemming from pedagogy, the education, uh, attendance on boys, and that is a removal. That's a removal of the firstborn son. It's not a, a killing of the body. It's a killing of the mind through the action of psychiatry, which means to lice the brain, lice the mind. It's a killing of the mind, and, and we've got to get rid of all of this indoctrination. And the, and the first step is to get rid of the psychiatrist. Um, uh, we can see the gravitation of psychiatry through Bolshevik Russia into Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany, that you know, that didn't fail. It just called the overhead. And what had happened was they transferred the psychiatrists up on levels into the American administration because they were then efficient. They had had enough practice by that time to be absolutely efficient. And going back to your earlier statement about Aldous Huxley, that's how it occurs. The um, science of psychiatry has uh, replaced every known relative uh, state through their means, through the television programming, through the radio broadcasting. And in this, you know, we've got a populace drugged up, doped up on Soma Theory, and um, they have to give those things up, although, you know, so many things are of an addicted nature. But those vices have to be let go. They have to let go of those vices and, and step back into relativity, step back into reality. Even if it hurts, that's what they rely on is cognitive dissonance. The fall back onto the state when you don't want to deal with the truth, the fall back on the state always wins. But it can't because that's, that's the second death as described in Revelation. So if you're going along and you don't want to see these things, you don't want to deal with these things, you enter into the second death by your own choices and decision. Again, we go back to the word election. You are electing these things, and you know that that cannot be tolerated by humanity. That's the second death. I don't want to see that kind of uh, collateral damage. You know, it's 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 branding. It's it's um, it's sort of what's the name? It's what you do when you. Um, when you first have a domesticated animal, you try to, um, can't think of the word right now, but you, 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 you make yourself, it's, um, as you say, it's father or it's, it's mother. You, you, you get familiar with it. And people are now so familiar with the branding, <laughs> um, that now, you know, it used to be the brands were, were basically, um, fulfilling the desires of, of, of people, but now the people are fulfilling the desires of the brand. Uh, the companies are creating people <laughs> out of their brand. And we, we, we get, um, we get, Oh, you cut out. We, we think that that is the normal uh, um, aspect of life. We're branded. And, and I don't know how else to say. Well, and that's what it is. It's nomenclature. You have a corporation that requires naming all things down to their smallest iota, which is democratic theory. Democritus was a laughing philosopher who came up with atomic theory, doctrine of atomists, to name all things down to its smallest iota. 
And this is explained in Genesis when that same Lord God there gives Adam, or man, the new creation, the power now to name all things. Instead of authority, or being the author of the book, now he's got the power to name all things. Well, where did that power come from? Who, who gave man power? Because before that, God was the authority. And, and this is what has been indoctrinated into humanity by which they're accepting their fate. They're accepting their oppression. They're accepting the depressive force upon them. And in this, again, we go back to the doctrine of election. There, there cannot be this electoral process. And um, everybody has to realize their own authority. They've got to get back into their house and... and um, establish their own uh, court barons. Th those things occur when the houses are then saying, look, you are going to be my law enforcement. You're going to enforce my law. That means you only speak my word. If you don't speak my word, your charter's gone. Done. Done deal. Over. End of story. End of game. On to the next one. If you're not going to speak my word, you're out of there. You're not going to represent me. You're not going to do anything other than speak my word. And that's what has to occur. Well, you yeah. said it. You hit it on the head when you said it's painful. It's, it's, there's, no, there's no way that the exiting from this system is not going to be painful. You, there's no way that people are, at first especially, going to be persecuted, just like is, uh, is written. I mean, it, <laughs> there is no avoiding that. And but it's a tough sell because you don't have, you, you know, you have this beautiful reward that is unfathomable to the, the average, you know, <laughs> inductee into the system, uh, which is, you know, nature itself, the, the beauty of life uh, and, and, and charity and everything else. But, but how can you accomplish that when, when as you say, the, the cognitive dissonance is there that, hey, if I don't participate, if, I don't, if I'm not employed, which actually means to use, right. if I'm not being used for my labor, um, if I'm not giving away my time currency, if I'm not selling my labor, uh, then I can't survive. Well, who says you can't survive? Right. And I mean, what, what is it that, that, that makes you say that, actually? I mean, I understand the psychological warfare that's happened, but with all, the, with all of the, the barren places on Earth, all of the places that are unpopulated, which is, I don't know what percentage of Earth, but it's a big percentage, what makes you think that you cannot survive without this system? Absolutely. Because they've been taught emotion. And they fear emotional pain, which is not a relative pain. It's created by the holder of those emotions. When your heart hurts and when you, you're sad, that is not harming you. But it feels, they have created the feeling of emotional constructs they also have the feeling of uh, the loss before they're gone because they've been created to be narcissistic and i was in the same position after the attempt on me in 2010 i walked around for the longest time what if what if what if well what the heck if i'm missing myself before i'm gone that means that i'm walking around as a narcissist what uh gives me the right to view myself as something more important than another being on this planet. And that was the, uh, quote, emotional pain, that the, the, the most pain that I experienced. Outside of that, everything was downhill. Everything, absolutely, everything was downhill after that point in time. When so, I, so I mean, it's a, if I got this right, you, you, you recognized that you were, you were lamenting your own your own death that hadn't happened and yet all these other people out there <laughs> needed needed your attention basically <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. and that's exactly what jesus said and i i had always um thought that i was adhering to the word of god and at that point in time i realized how indoctrinated i was because i wasn't actually walking as to the word of god i said i was thought i was but in reality, I was not following Jesus as me. I was following the created me that is this, the ego, the super ego and the head. And again, that was the most painful of my entire experience. Everything else set aside, um, 
everything else though was downhill after that the the pain was lifted the um the pressure upon my shoulders was lifted uh the walk became easier and easier and easier and easier and as i went along it, it it's just so profound because that is the ascension i was able to rise because i gave up the created self the ego is the super ego and the id and at that point in time that's when you start to ascend it's not in a written form it's not and and i love led zeppelin i mean a lot of our listeners probably don't even listen to led zeppelin but stairway to heaven is is dead on to what we were taught to go for i was buying the stairway to heaven i was seeking title I was seeking all of these degrees and I wanted a name for myself and I wanted to leave a lineage and a uh, posterity. That that was the greatest fallacy of ever. You know, I was protecting my house because I wanted to give it to my children. Posterity. That's being the post heir. That's after you're an heir. You're never ever the heir. And, um, you know, my priorities were so flawed within the um, religious indoctrination. Once I got out of that, it, it's just, it's been a very, very amazing walk. Yeah, and I'm, see, I'm at the, I guess you could say I'm at the beginning of, of a similar path because, you know, the Bible, I, I never would have thought I would have been a Bible reader or let alone try to explain the Bible to people. But, man, now that I've actually <laughs> been looking at it and reading it and going word for word, uh, looking at the concordances and figuring out all these things, there is, I mean, you know, truly, there is no way that probably 99% of the people, and that includes myself, uh, at least four months, five months ago, was there's no way that people can take that book and get anything from it. I mean, there's no way. Uh, you can you can get the very surface things, but like you said, to actually walk in its in in that path that it's describing, you have to do so much due diligence that it, it almost gives you a headache. Because I mean, just to just to uncover one page can sometimes take a a whole day of of contemplation and understanding what the heck this thing is trying to get across to you. But boy, once you do, and you, and you, of course you realize that back then when it was written, words weren't just words. We've we've been, you know, symbols, mathematical equations. One one word might have meant you know so many different possibilities or some massive you know thing, concept, if you will. That you know, and now we look at it and all we see are the surface words on this thing, which mean absolutely nothing. Because the one word in that Bible might mean a whole paragraph uh, uh, in, in in relation to what you're trying to learn. So I, I don't know. It's it, it's it's been a it's been real revelatory for me to to really sit down and just start really looking at this thing. And, I, and I, of course, I <laughs> I bow to your wisdom in this regard. Well, and the majority is examining ourselves, and and that's something that we were not taught uh, in religious indoctrination. You know, as you, as you go along in the beginning, um, I too, I was, I was putting so much literal stock in the Word of God. Um, and, and, you know, one of the brothers said, you know, those who take the Bible literally are fools. And I was offended. I was offended because I was still with the ego. And um, eventually I got over myself after, you know, numerous times of the same brother telling me Tammy get over yourself you know and I, each time I was offended I was like what I'm not selfish I do this and this and this and I don't eat here and I get I throw money at everything at that point in time I was still throwing money at everything it'll fix it if I just give money to my representation or if I give money to the church that'll fix it well I learned the hard way no you can't throw money at anything money does not do anything at all and um ultimately it comes down to examination of the self and a lot of meditation and realizing oh my gosh I had that indoctrination um, one of the most stupid things and, and I laugh now um, was the concept of um, you know it, it, taking stock of everything around me and I used to uh, it, you know my pantry was full 
I always had something for a rainy day and I kept buying things and I, the, the, the absolute asinine thing of, of all of it was um, I would buy things on sale. That is an absolute indoctrination. So even if I didn't need something, it was on sale so I had to buy it just in case. And those things, you know, divesting of those things are, you know, a requirement. But it's those simple things that allow you to move to the next phase of an ascension. You know, once you get rid of all of these stupid things, I mean, it, the, the majority of it, getting rid of these things is the absolute uh, lunacy. It was actually absolute lunacy, what, what I was well, there's, holding. There's, there's tools, you know, there's tools that can help you do this. And you unfortunately, you can only learn one tool at a time. And you sort of have to master each tool as you go. One of those tools, of course, is learning the, the logical fallacies. Well, I tell you what, man, if you learn the logical fallacies, there ain't nothing that these Harvard graduates and these attorneys can get past you. Right. You start, you start uncovering the, the logistical ridiculousness of everything that's said. And, of course, these guys, that's exactly what they're taught. You know, the, the attorney class and the, the quote-unquote noble uh, <laughs> class, they are taught to use the liberal arts in a fallacy so that you are utterly confused. You cannot understand their language. You're, you're drawn to appeals of authority, to appeals of, of every, you know, appeals of pity, appeals of <laughs> sales, you know, all these, all these different tricks that are used. But I'll tell you what, if, if, if people would just learn a basic understanding of the logical fallacies, and apply that to everyday conversation and everyday interaction, what a tool that is. What a wonderful thing to be able to point to something and say, hey, you just put a red herring in my path. Hey, you just attacked my character instead of my message. Hey, you just uh, appealed to government as authority when they're not the authority. You know, you can, you can, actually, you can actually break that cycle of... Uh, of just tortured indoctrination and, and it surprises these guys too I mean they're they're shocked when you actually point out their uh, their their fallacy because you know that is uh, that's the that's the word magic right there is the fallacy absolutely and uh, one of the things that helped me the most um, was uh, Descartes meditations on first philosophy and um, to to see that written is it's so profound because it was the uh, as if looking into a mirror and it allowed me to further examine myself upon meditation and to see that you know Rene Descartes had gone through the same walk and then uh, you know again to go to uh, and read Dante's uh, Divine Comedy um, and, and Dante's walk through Purgatory through uh, the Inferno and again through paradise then you start realizing all of these things and, and our ability and not just our ability but our absolute authority and um, again for so long I held on to you know the stupidest things feminism for example I knew without a doubt that that males were being vilified long 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 ago However, I, I still felt at that time there was need for feminism. You know, being a female, I thought, well, something's oppressing me. And, and again, that was part of my walk because, okay, if something's oppressing you and it's not the male, then what is it? And you have to examine every single aspect of all known realities, including consensus reality. And yes, um, I think the, the greatest thing that anyone can carry with them is to laugh at stupidity instead of taking it to the ego and being offended laugh at the stupidity or the ignorance or the naivety because um i mean that, that that was the hardest thing for me to get over it originally but then the easiest thing to laugh at later and realize these things you know what um one time i was out to um dinner and and it was actually with Bo. And he was beside me at this restaurant, and I said, well, that sounds good. He says, how does that sound good? You know, and it's just the littlest things that we're holding and, and um, you know, uh, <laughs> colors. <laughs> colors. What are you supposed to say, then? 
That sounds good. Come on, you just ruined it for me. <laughs> How does that sound good? You know, I'd end. Now, now, now I'm going to have to have someone read me the menu just so I can say it sounds good. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but it's, it's such a silly walk. A lot of these things are are absolutely outside of logic but we don't realize until we face something like that and then we that's the divesting part you have to face it you have to go through that experience and then you just let it go and and, and again the, the greatest um, learning curve was to laugh at the, the ignorance or the stupidity or ignorance and not take it to the ego because it, it really is funny when you when you get down to what exactly are we holding because we hold some of the silliest things well, I think we, uh, I think that's called culture. It is. That's part of the indoctrination. It's culture, language, uh, religion. All of those things are social creation, social engineering. And, uh, yeah, of course, if you go back to the foundation, it, one word, doctrine. Doc means to teach. Trend means three times. So everything that we know is taught to us in three ways, which is the three days of, of Christ's crucifixion. Uh, meta, meaning morality. Soma is psychology and ethics, or Veda meaning ethics. And those are the things that we are di divesting because those are the fictional representation of the relative state. And once you realize those three forms of the crucifixion, how we are crucified, we're crucified. You're a bad mom, you're a bad daughter, you're a horrible student, um, whatever else. That's all in morality. You're not a good taxpayer. That's morality. Um, once you get rid of all of that and say, wait a second, I am before you called me those things, and so I'm just going to let that roll right off my shoulders. And that's part of the divesting part. You have, you've you got to get rid of all of those um, things that, that you hold on to. Um, you know, or, did, you, did you just like uh, eloquently say that uh, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but names will never hurt? <laughs> Absolutely. And, is and that what you just said? That's what it is. Way? That's what it is. That's what it is. Because, you know, it, um, no, you're not right. You must be crazy. Well, that's the use of psychology. You know, and, and then we're taught ethics. Well, uh, when is it right to kill a baby? Well, let's call it abortion. And, and we'll let an attorney define life uh, starting with the quickening. When you can feel a baby move, well, that's when life begins. No, it doesn't. That those are the actions of ethics, and those are things that we hold, and we're being taught by another entity or another being a Lord God that we're allowing to represent our word and our walk, our relative uh, beings. And in this, once you get rid of all of those things and realize, no, wait, I'm the authority. Life begins in life. It just explodes. It's not something that's thought of or conceived, uh, such as a baby is conceived. A baby is not conceived. It explodes into life at the uh, the uh, egg and the the sperm. That is the splitting of the atom. That that's an explosion of life. That's when life occurs. It doesn't occur when I think about it. You know. I suppose it's easy, it's easier just to say, "Hey, life occurred many, many millions of years ago." <laughs> Right, and, it just, <laughs> and it's been exploding ever since, so there yes. was no time when I wasn't alive. <laughs> right, right, and, that, and that's what Jesus was trying to say. That is the beginning and the end, because the construct of time limits us to a linear time frame. But everything is still beginning, and it's still ending in this moment, right now. You know, it's disturbing when you, when you actually do look up... In the legal dictionaries, of course, you look up the definition of life and, and words like that, and it's real disturbing because, yeah, there are three different forms of life. There's your there's your life life, your simple life, and, and some other life. One of them begins at conception. One of them begins at birth, which is your civil life because you can't have a person without a, having a, 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 a surety. And then there's the quickening, which, again, is, I believe, is, you said it's the first movement, right? Right, according so to you, the attorney. <laughs> so you have three different forms of, quote-unquote, life, according to these people. That's disturbing. It is. It's perverted. That's really disturbing. Absolutely. And uh, we're, we're coming up on break, by the way. Um, but um, in these... Uh, views of life these are representation they're, they're respecting life 
which is to see it again in another in another way. And it's the same representation that they've been offering. And that's another thing that everybody has to divest themselves of. Don't accept representation because life is already. And Jesus had, had, had said that in um, Matthew 6 through 10 over and over and over again. He says, you know, what are you doing? A blade of grass does not seek to be. It just pops up out of nowhere. And it, it doesn't ask you for any uh, uh, power to, to be a, a blade of grass. What are you doing? What are you thinking? And, and you know, when you realize that you are as a blade of grass you don't have any other importance or any lesser importance than a blade of grass life itself a blade of grass a tree a dog a cat um any other by on this planet is of the same importance it, it's not lesser than or or more than any other life and and uh, the foundation of by is it, the, the meaning is two parts made animate that's it 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 is it explodes it is it it moves um now, now see i could i you know if i was someone else i could say oh I mean, this is the easy way out. oh you're sounding like a buddhist i just i could just label you and move on and and pretend you didn't say anything at all oh, she's just a buddhist i'm I'm going to go kill some bugs. Right, right. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm going to go hunt or I'm going to do... But that's not what you're saying. It's so much deeper than that, you know? Right, and and that's what Jesus was trying to tell us. Know thyself. Don't don't accept these titles, Buddhist or Christian or Jew or Muslim or uh, whatever else they come up with, individual, male, female. doesn't matter. Don't accept those things. You are not those things. Those are social engineered states. Their um, psychological in indoctrination, it's, it's not what you are. You are life. <clears throat> and I think that uh, we missed a break, so we're just going to carry on through. Um, I don't know what's with, with the system, but if you need a break, I can carry on. Um, and just let me know. Uh, you know, Meditation 3 of Descartes' uh, First Philosophy, uh, or Meditations on First Philosophy, it starts with, of God, that he exists. Number one, I will now close my eyes, I will stop my ears, I'll turn away my senses from their objects. I will even efface them, my consciousness, all the images of corporeal things, or at least because this can hardly be accomplished, I will consider them as empty and false. I'm thus holding converse only with myself, and closely examining my nature, I will endeavor to obtain by degrees a more intimate and familiar knowledge of myself. I am a thinking, conscious thing, that is, a being who doubts, affirms, denies, knows a few objects, and is ignorant of many, who loves, hates, wills, refuses, who imagines likewise, and perceives, for, as I before remarked, although the things which I perceive or imagine are perhaps nothing at all apart from me and in themselves, I am nevertheless assured that those modes of consciousness, which I call perceptions and imaginations, and as far as only as they are modes of consciousness, exist in me. So they don't exist if I'm thinking of them, they already exist. You know, and, and so we can we can espouse many, many, many different sciences or ologies or ideologies, but that does not bring anything into existence, nor does it take it out of existence. Things that exist, exist, and it doesn't matter if we're thinking of them or maintaining a train of thought, which is imagination, which is what, uh, um, oh goodness, Leviathan Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes, uh, refers to in Leviathan itself, and that's the creation of form matter. The form matter does not exist. Just because we bind it with thought, it does not mean it exists. We just think it does. And again, you go back to um, the various forms of representation, and you, you get to the foundation of what they created, which is an agency by estoppel. And agency by estoppel is created by action of law, by a principle. So that another, a third party, thinks that those things exist. That's all it is. If you believe it exists, it exists. But it doesn't it really exist. It's for matter. Well, I mean, I've, I've gotten to the point now where um, 
you know, and you can't win. You're going to offend somebody no matter what you say. But um, I, if people, um, you know, every Wednesday night we have a show about the Bible, basically. And um, you know, I tell people now that don't want to hear about it because they don't believe in God or because they hate religion or whatever. And I say, look, <laughs> it took me a while to figure this out, but the Bible isn't about God. Oh my God, that's sacrilege! That's what are you talking about? Even the, even the people that say I don't believe in God, they're like, oh no, oh oh. And I say, look, <laughs> exactly what you just said. But I also say, uh, this is the story of the creation of fiction. Well, this is the story of the fall of man into a fictional realm. Man, as you say, is a legal concept. Adam is the name of mankind, not a single individual. It says so right in the Bible. You, 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 so don't don't look at it like that. It invokes God. It talks about God, but it's not about God. It's about these people who have claimed to be God on Earth and anoint themselves at not sleep. So so look at it like that, and that it's leading you to God, but it doesn't claim to describe what God is. It does. It's not, the story of, it's not the story of God. It's it's the story of how to be God. Right, right. And that's the foundation of Revelation. When all things are revealed to God, then God is able to come in and hold those accountable that play God for a very long time. Now, the etymology on tribulation <clears throat> is from Old French, of course, from Church Latin, tribulationem. Uh, nominative tribulatio, distress, trouble, affliction, noun of action from past participle stem of tribulare, to oppress or afflict, a figurative use by Christian writers of Latin tribulare to press, also possibly to quote thresh out grain from tribulum, quote threshing sledge, from stab of terrer, which means to rub or see throw, at plus bilum suffix forming names of tools tools if you accept to be being a useful idiot you you are a tool of the system and the tribulation is just the distress trouble affliction that's what we've already gone through that's the point in time or um, the uh, place where everybody is they are in the tribulation they're accepting all of these names and titles and in the law, in Black's Law Dictionary, that is the definition of nomenclature, nomen, name. It means a distress. It's the state of ohm, the resistance. We also talked off air about a week ago about the, 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 the thought that the Bible isn't a, necessarily a historical record or historical book but that each each one of these books like tribulation as you're talking about is a state of being it's a state of well like i should say it's a state of, of accepting a, a, a concept like you say so you, you could be anywhere within the bible at, at, at one time it's not a history or it's not a a, a, a a timeline as much as it is just a conceptual understanding of the of the fall of 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 again man into fiction right or life life into fiction right and that and that word it, it's so profound understanding and shakespeare said it best when he said all the world is a stage and uh, uh as you like it and that that's what that means you can take up any title you want to out of the bible you can play job you can play delilah you can play samson you can play any part you want to and you can also play God. You can play Jesus. You can also play God. You can play judges. You can play Acts. You can play uh, Levites, taxmen. You can play all of these parts. But ultimately, it says what happens when you play those parts. The end result of playing those parts. If you're Eve, uh, you may or may not be innocent. Uh, but if you're Delilah you're rolling on somebody else you're delivering up samson you're giving his information to the judges whereby he can be crucified and bringing down his house so you're going to be held accountable you can be job you can lose everything because you're holding on to fictional thought and in the end you'll be picked back up by the church and never know what happened to you 
or you can be Jesus, or you can be God. You know, it, it's up to everybody in their relative walk. That is a, it's a real-time walk. The, the uh, first part of the Bible, of course, the Old Testament, is a manifest. How it's constructed to be under the Lord God. And, of course, the um, New Testament is to walk out of that, or the walk back into the garden, if you so choose. What is your interpretation of the of the Garden of Eden? I looked up Eden and it meant uh, pleasure or um, uh, so there was another word, but joy or pleasure. Right, and and this is the Garden. This is also heaven, if you so choose. Heaven is is right here at your fingertips, as is your own Garden. But if you're patronizing the snake in the Garden, it's never going to be yours because you're giving up the Garden. If you're not patronizing the snake in the garden, then of course you're not giving up the garden. So your your tree of knowledge is is genetic engineering, basically. Right. It's uh, yeah. social engineering, psychological constructs. Gotcha. Doctrine after doctrine after doctrine, and of course, doc means to teach, and trend means three times. So, by the, at the other end, you're indoctrinated. You're gonna hold all of those concepts and walk away from your own garden simply by eating of that tree of knowledge, participating. Partake, partake means participate, to consume. And in a consumer society, of course, guess what? All of society is consuming those concepts. They're all eating from the same tree at the same time. And if they're not eating from the same tree at the same time, well, of course, the garden is theirs. And all of a sudden, God appears. And that's exactly what it says in Revelation. When things are, all these things are revealed to you, that's when you come into your own. It, it's absolutely the most beautiful, my favorite book, is Revelation, of course. And, you know, the, the companion is the New Testament, and the companion to that is the Old Testament. You know, you, you can't skip or miss anything because it, it's such a... A profound learning experience this walk and and um, if you listen if you can see and hear then you avoid a lot of the experience and that's something that I wasn't able to do because I, I was just uh, so naive for, for the longest time and so I had to learn by experience and in this you know of course leaving the farm is is designed so that others don't have to experience what I did because it was such a you know, I had sucker written on my forehead. <laughs> well, we, we all do. We all did. I, I bought everything. <laughs> you know, and, and um, so often I think that's the funniest part of all of it is because I bought everything. And uh, that's it's um, profound. And, and um, But hopefully, you know, our listeners can skip a lot of that. They don't have to experience those things. And um, the worst that can happen is that they experience cognitive dissonance and it hurts for a moment. The truth hurts, uh, but this is only an emotional pain. And again, as my brother once said, you know, over and over and over again, get over yourself. And, and of course, it was offensive, but it shouldn't have been at that time. And eventually, I, I did learn to get over myself. It is tough. Um... I'm not sure you ever really can uh, to the to the full extent that you're. I mean, I'd like to think it's possible, but boy, it, in this in this world, like you said, this consumer consumer based world, where you're just constantly bombarded with every assault to the senses, it's boy, it's tough, huh? It is. It is, and and um, but again, after that initial phase of realizing how much I was holding and keeping of this created self that was the hardest part everything after that was was downhill it was so it was an experience and a journey and and it was a, a beautiful descent because at the same time on the other side I was ascending you know it, everything lifts from me and and we're our worst judges when we're holding these things it's us sitting on our shoulders saying no you're a bad girl you're a bad boy whatever else there's nobody else there it's just us taking up these concepts and judging ourselves and, and for so long that was my misery i was in absolute misery because i was earning the right to be i couldn't figure out how to be 
and in reality it's just the walk of being it, it, by our actions by our work and actions and and uh, you know I'm still divesting I still do the this, this silliest things and and um but it, it's easier not to realize them you know these silly things and drop them and, and it's like oh my gosh that is so funny and then it's over and I'm past it and and um but it's nothing um like the tribulation the tribulation is the the um realm of purgatory as dante explains it in purgatory you know it's it's this place of of all of these questions where you know everything is and everything isn't and we want to make it real and we want to be real and we want to be accepted and we want to be this or that and that, that is the tribulation that is the misery but once you're you're past that and you stop taking up those titles and you stop seeking to be which is the only sin that's the only sin sin is coveting it's it's wanting to be you're coveting the self and sin in latin means empty and that that was my misery i was so empty and um once you're not empty and you you realize that you actually are consist of the word of god then you're no longer empty you're absolutely full you're possessed by god what's really disturbing is the, the, the nature of this this and most uh, nations out there is the uh, the concept of the oath you know everything's everything's requires an oath and of course when you read the oaths in this country especially our military there it's like i pledge an oath to follow the orders of the president oh okay that, that's great what about me are you, you going to help me out here are you going to protect me oh no i'm just following the orders of the president but then if you know see the oath it, it, it's followed by uh you know making an oath uh invoking god uh as the as the as the punishment to that oath and yeah you go to you go in the bible can't remember what verse verse says and it's very specific Uh oh, you cut out for a minute. Oh, come on. Oh, I don't like to miss what you were saying. Well, um, we'll get back to Oz, um in a moment. Are you back? Nope. Um, let's see. The oaths in the Bible, uh, have no father above me, of course. Um, can you repeat that now? You stopped at the word oath, and then you cut out for a moment, Clint. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know how far I got, but uh, the, basically the, the, everything's reliant on an oath in this country. So you're literally pledging an oath not to God, but to a third party or a state or a government or whatever. And you're invoking. You're, you're invoking God. And that is actually the definition of uh, of adultery of of idolization you know that uh, false idol if you will and i could figure someone someone actually uh as i was talking about it someone said well, what's the difference between a vow and an oath and i said I, I gotta be honest i don't know so i looked at the difference and, and a vow is a a solemn promise that you make to god to 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 do whatever uh, some people will take it so far as to be selfish and say, hey, uh, well, I'll stop smoking if you give me a million dollars, God. Uh, that's, that's, that's a vow. Right. But when, but when you take an oath, you're using God's name in vain. Absolutely. So, so all, these, all these soldiers, all these politicians, all these judges, everybody in this so-called Christian nation is literally taking God's name in vain. Absolutely. And um, when you get down to it, um, you know, you, you look, uh, James, for example, James 5, uh, <clears throat> let me get back to it. You have lived in pleasure on this earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, upon the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruits of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. But ye also patience, stablish your heart, 
For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Behold, uh, take my brethren their prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, recount them happy, which endure. Ye have, ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, and the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But of all, above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Now, what this means is you, you just walk it. If you don't like something, it's no. If you like something, it's yes. But you don't swear. That's the whole credit system. Now, originally, um, there is a bar standard of all things. You can raise and lower that bar according to what you're accepting, what you're tolerating. The representation of that is the British Accreditation Registry, which is the now known as the bar, the bar associations. Those things are a representation of that actual bar that raises and lowers. And when you're patronizing that thing, you're not patronizing yourself and raising and lowering the bar of your authority. You're uh, patronizing whoever else sets the bar standard for you or the credit standard standard. That is not the will of God. That's called credit, which translates over into debt. That makes you a debtor, a slave, a um, sinful, empty being. And that's why he said, never, ever uh, swear oaths. Just, just do it. You're, you're either going to be or you're not going to be. And Shakespeare summed that up at the, uh, in his version of the tribulation in the soliloquy of Hamlet. He says, to be or not to be. And, you know, throughout there, he's like, aye, that's the rub. You know, and finally, he realizes what it is that the tribulation is, and yet he can't overcome it. He wasn't able to overcome that. And, of course, we watched the uh, fall of Ophelia as she was seeking the self. She was seeking to be. She wanted to be loved. She wanted to be cared for. But she didn't uh, care. She didn't walk the walk. She was wanting to be in that position. And that's what was her quote, uh, the metaphor of her suicide. What's amazing is that, uh, you know, we, we, of course, grew up with the same thing, but I, we, we also submit our children to this indoctrination of the oath. We call it the pledge, yes. the pledge of allegiance. We, we invoke God in that, too. Um, when that first started, the kids used to put their hands in the air, uh, Nazi style. Right. <laughs> and... Uh, would uh, actually get kicked out of school. Their parents fined or imprisoned if the child wouldn't, uh, you know, communist style pledge allegiance. And uh, so, you know, if you think about it, this is part of this the this this sort of concept I've realized lately is is the standardization of, of language into culture uh, of the of the legal system into the language. So we we speak and we act very much like we are the person we, we self-identify as something artificial we don't even realize it because the language is is the common or vulgar language uh, it's the non-noble language if you will um, that we're put under this quote-unquote common law again the lowest possible status and, and 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 we literally walk around speaking words which we do not know we speak babble for the most part and only when you actually start reading the dictionary do you realize that you're that you're continuously just entrapping yourself mm -hmm. into this system and you're living it it's not like you're just speaking it you're literally living the lie and, and that's a pretty amazing feat if you ask me the, the, the fact that you can that these these attorneys could create a language structure that is so similar in phonetic sounds, but yet so different in meaning. You got to you got to admit that is a that is a fantastically evil and brilliant feat. Absolutely, and and it is Babel. Everybody's in it. They they've been taught to view it from afar. At one time, Babel was was existent, and and um, you know, to be punished, everybody was thrown into all parts of the world, and that's Babel. No, this is Babel. 
until you get rid of Babel, everybody who's taking up those uh, uh, concepts and taking from the tree of knowledge and patronizing those false gods, I'm sorry, but everyone is the whore of Babel. And when the whore of Babel star stops fornicating, which Jesus defines in 1 Corinthians 6 as uh, patronizing the Lord God, you can only fornicate by giving your body over to the Lord God, then that's when everything falls and then heaven occurs. Heaven appears. Heaven is right here in Babel, but you have to get rid of Babel first before you can see it. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I looked up the word utopia. Everybody, everybody says, oh, you're, you're a utopia, and you talk about the perfect society. Well, I'm not talking about society. I'm just talking about nature. And it turns out, utopia, when you defined it, when you define it to its simplest terms, basically means nowhere. Meaning, you know how you, you go out to nature, you go hiking, or you go uh, camping, or horseback riding, whatever. You're, you're out in the middle of, of somewhere, that it really, and, and we use the expression, <laughs> wow, we're in the middle of nowhere. And yet, at the same time, we feel safe and and wonderful, and we, we feel so close to nature, we feel enlightened and spiritually uh, awakened, and, and we look around and we're just in awe of the beauty of nowhere. Well, that's utopia. You see, we don't, what we don't realize is that we build cities and factories and dams, and we, we dam it up, and we do all these really crazy things to ensure to ourselves that we'll never see heaven because it's got a bunch of black top on it. Absolutely. And Pretty it's amazing. A, and it, it, it's a location. Everything is, is a location. The state of being hurt, or the state of being in pain, or the state of being in confusion, or the construct of time, living in a time zone, or adhering to time or um, uh, adhering to law, being underneath of law, you're locating yourself. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 8, 18. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came to him and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And another of the disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. His father wasn't dead yet. He wanted to go save him. He wanted to go grab him so badly and teach him the way of Christ. But if they don't want to come along, if they don't want to go forward, then you have to let the be dead bury their own, their own dead. You, you, you know, don't cast your pearls to swine. There are so many that have bought into the system that love the fornication. They love their servitude. They love the comfort that it brings. They love the drugs. They love their money. They love their things. You have to go forward. Otherwise, you never find heaven. And it, you cannot locate yourself by, by impeding yourself or crippling yourself attempting to move uh, such as Judas or Job out of their placements because they're choosing those and we're not allowed to inhibit or deter from free will that's that's the foundation of of all things free will of course we we can talk about free will all we want um, but we have to match that up with the the notion of cause and effect, causality, the, the fact that uh, while it appears that we have a choice, most people would say, well, well there is no choice. I have to be a, a citizen. I've never known anything else. Nothing else officially exists. And, and that's that's the hard part, because how, how do I prove, Tammy, <laughs> how do I prove that I'm not in the system? You can't prove a negative. You can't prove that you're not a part of something. You can only prove that you are a part of something. So, you know, you can't give someone a certificate of, of non-birth. You can't give someone a certificate or a license to be free and free and under God. It, it's, 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 um, it's something that cannot be quote unquote taught. Right. It can only be felt, it can only be known. It's something you know. 
And again, I don't need an oath to know or take an oath to know what I am. Right. And that's why we came up with the uh, forgiveness and the executor doc. Because God has to realize that God is. And God has to take over that body. And God has to then direct. God has to be the one that's saying, no, you're not going to do these things to me. I'm not under your authority. I only adhere to public law, which means uh, do no harm. I'm a state of being. I'm the sovereign. You are a cartoon. John Kerry is a cartoon. He's a secretary of state. That's an official title. John Kerry is a cartoon. Uh, a president is a cartoon. President Obama is a cartoon. Israel is a cartoon. America is a cartoon. All of these things are fictional creations, and, and when God realizes what God is, he's the one that comes in and says, no, enough is enough. Enough is enough, and, and it's your sovereignty. It's done by your works and actions. It's not something that you say. It's something that you do, and you have to solidify that by letting the other know in, in their language, no more. You're not going to touch the estate. You're not going to take the estate. This is what's going to happen if you if you would like to contract with me. I'll, I'll be glad to rent you my body, but it's going to cost you this time. And that cost is that you are going to be in hell now. And and this is written in, in all of the laws, in all of their statutes, in all of their codes. That's, that's the action of shipping. Okay, if you want to play pirates, you might want to choose a lesser known pirate, not God. Because if you choose God and you try to pick up God and put him on your ship, you are volunteering to assume those charges. And that's what we facilitated with the court process against Congress. But, again, if you are patronizing it, you're submitting or underwriting your fate. You're underwriting the insurance policy. And ensuring that you are, as a citizen, you're going to be used... Until we can lift this from all of humanity, which is happening now. You know, we're, we're, I'm going as fast as I can, but um, it, it's not... Uh, humanity is still asking for those representations until now. Now, this week, uh, they did polling, and, and apparently Darth Vader is more uh, popular and, and voted for than Congress, which is profound. And, and um, in, in, in what regard? Oh, they did those Gallup polls or whatever, and they said that uh, the sheeple voted for Darth Vader above Congress, and uh, one of them was uh, Jar Jar Binks. They voted Jar Jar Binks as more uh, beloved than Congress, and and that says a lot, you know, uh, considering that, you know, those things are horrifying. Darth Vader is horrifying. <laughs> it's, it's, better, it's better to vote for Satan than Satan, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least with at least with Darth Darth Vader, you know, there's a a possibility of <laughs> good. <laughs> right, right, and you know your enemy at that time. You know, Congress has not been viewed as an enemy, but as you know, in 1947, with the National Security Act, Congress declared humanity the enemy of the state. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's potentiality, you know. Anybody can be an enemy of the state, basically. So it, it 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 wipes away any protections from not being. You know, the the, the older the older language in the law was always uh, except citizens of the United States. Uh, you know, not regarding citizens of the United States, and then they changed that to include all all persons, basically. Right, and then you know you look at. Uh uh, USC 7 and you realize that you're being farmed. It's, it says right there that human beings, man included under any other animal, is being farmed under the action of agriculture which is agrarian economics. So living on this farm, instead of owning the forests and chases, you are living in the forests and chases. You're the thing that's called vermin. You're the thing that's, uh, you know, defecating in its forest and it's going to nail you for that. It's going to find you for moving parts of its force around and everything else and um you know that it's just absolutely profound what they've done and and um humanity really has to stop patronizing that thing because all it is is a farmer it's a sick and twisted uh pharmaceutical farm and uh you know they, they came out not even a month ago the psychiatrist and said well we're testing all of the lithium levels in the water 
to see if it's been preventing suicide. Lithium is not water soluble. Although the psychiatrist, the same psychiatrist said, well, it's naturally occurring in your water supply. It is not possible for lithium to naturally occur in the water supply. So they've been doping the water supply. Did the sheeple raise hell? No. They were busy with uh, Pokemon and uh, Batman and these Marvel comics and, um, you know, what, what the latest fad was. And they have to get out of that mindset because there's more important things to deal with than um, the days of our lives. I, I heard you actually uh, a while ago, you were talking about, and I concur with this totally because I've certainly looked into it myself, but you were talking about the food ingredients and how they simulate when, when you know separate they're 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 sort of not not necessarily harmful or don't produce an effect but when you put a bunch of food ingredients uh in together they get into the body and they warm up uh then all of a sudden they they recreate the simulation of opium or they recreate a simulated version of some other drug like lithium um are you familiar with a lot of those absolutely and anybody can go right now to the codex alimentarius uh gsfa online groups and go to the benzoate groups and uh of course benzoates when you consume any kind of uh benzoic acid calcium benzoate potassium benzoate or sodium benzoate what those do is they break down into what everybody knows as benzene or uh, bennies. Benzodiazepine, as it aerates in the metabolism uh, process through the Krebs cycle itself, or the citric acid cycle, uh, you're aerating into soma theory. Now, those benzoates, when you go there, and, and I went ahead and opened the pages, you were first talking about that, um, the allowances are there what is allowed to be in your food as a preservative and for example aromatized alcohol beverages e.g. beer wine and spiritus color type beverages low alcohol refreshers bakery wares there is an allowance of up to 1000 milligrams per kilogram that's metabolizing into um, volume Xanax, Ativan, uh, what's that uh, major one? Rohypnol, the date rape drug. If you're consuming these alcohols, bakery wares, there's candied fruit, cereals, chewing gum, cider and perry, cocoa based breads, coffee, concentrates of fruit nectar, concentrates of vegetable nectar, confectionaries including hard and soft candies, nougats, other than food categories, cooked fruit, cooked mollusks, cooked for fried ve vegetables, cured. Uh, including salted and dried, non-heat treated process, comminuted meat, poultry, and game products. Cured and including salted and dried, non-heat treated process, meat, poultry, and game products in whole pieces or cuts. Dairy-based desserts, decorations, diabetic food, um, dietetic food. Sorry, dietetic foods intended for special medical purposes. The list goes on and on and on. When you're mixing these, now remember the the upper. Uh, limits are a thousand to I'm seeing here two thousand milligrams per kilogram when you're eating these in combination how much volume are you consuming how much Xanax are you on and the other end of that how are the attorneys cashing in on this a pregnant female for example in this society if she's consuming these foods child protection can come in and say well you're on illegal medications and the sheeple are believing this. Her parents turn on her. Her family turns on her and allows the attorneys to take a child off of that female when she's never, ever, ever consumed such a product, although she's eating what's told to her by the food pyramid. I, I am, uh, I'm unfortunately uh, someone who is from all of what I understand, and, and the, the interviews I've done, and the people I've asked, um, a non-metabolizer. So I, um, I will have the worst possible side effects from a lot of the pharmaceuticals. Um, 
so I have to be very careful. I have to eat um, as much organic as I can. I can't eat anything with the. Uh, well, I call it stupid food. I mean, anytime I go to a restaurant, I'm, I'm just I just know I'm going to drop my IQ by thirty points because of the ingredients and MSG and all this crap that's in there. So I have to be really careful um, with all of that, especially pharmaceutical drugs. You only have the worst possible side effects with pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, that's where I come in. So I have to avoid everything, basically. So uh, that's why I ask, because um, there's, a, there's a certain percent of the population that doesn't have the enzymes to uh, metabolize all of of this stuff, and I believe that I'm probably one of them. There's uh, cytochrome P450 is the is the actual enzyme, and then there's different variations. 2D6 is the most uh, known one, uh, but about 20% of the population seems to be missing. And of course, what happens? Well, if you take an antipsychotic, that's really a psychotic, and you have school shootings, and you have all of these different things that are happening. I should know because I was given a, uh, I asked for a, a friend for a sleeping pill and he gave me a very small piece of one Seroquel. Seroquel is a killer. Uh, it's killing a lot of soldiers. It causes uh, suicidal thoughts. It causes all kinds of horrible things. Well, I took it and I had the worst possible side effects. I stopped breathing. I, uh, I turned into basically a nut, a, a mental, a mental uh, you know, patient basically like right. what, like what you what you picture in a film or something and, and I gotta tell you I now have complete empathy and understand why people are shooting people in schools because the stuff if you cannot metabolize it it makes you absolutely insane absolutely. and that's yeah, a, it's a really scary thought so I have to be really careful with my right. foods nitrates are another one that I recommend people stay away from absolutely and study the Krebs cycle itself because you would be very very extremely surprised to see that the foods that you're ingesting according to the food pyramid itself actually impedes the metabolism cycle so for example about midway through you've got succinol succinol cholate it causes heart attacks right however if you have a protein if you start with a protein or a vitamin D compound for example you'll metabolize through that whole uh, metabolism process, the Krebs cycle, and at the other end, you're ending up with uh, what's called glycogen, or food for the mind and soul, uh, produced by the liver. However, if you're eating or consuming succinyl choline, you're stopping the, the metabolism process of all of the cells in your body, every single one of them, because there's no enzyme, there's no lipid, there's no uh, hormone tapping on the RNA to tell the cell what to do next. The cell just slices, splits in half, and the majority of the cells in the body are now just hydrolyzed. They're just fat cells, split in half water molecules, and that's that's all they become. And so we see all of these uh, these terminologies used: obesity, fat. Those are just lysed fat cells that don't have anywhere else to go because of what's been ingested by the body. So you're not going through the Krebs cycle. You're not experiencing um, citric acid from sunlight that goes from vitamin D to C to B to A. Or, and then into glycogen, you're experiencing all of these things that you're uh, exposed to through ingesting them. And, you know, you, you start out, uh, let's see, malate. You, you go into about three quarters of the way through the Krebs cycle, you, you run into malate. That is the um, combination of milk products. However, protein actually goes through that and you'll hit the malate uh, phase of, of metabolism without having ingested milk. That's part of it. So you have the tapping on the RNA and it tells the cell, okay, what next? And then you go into um, uh, oxalo, uh, acetate, okay? And you know acetate, right? Acetone. And then the higher you go in the Krebs cycle, you're going through that acetone phase and finally it's a gas, period. That's it. It's, it's very simple. It's not uh, rocket science. But as I've said over and over again, if you are consuming lactose, corn products, milk products, you cannot go into the, the next cycles of the metabolism. You can't go to the next phase in order to phosphorylase. You're not with the phosphate balances. You're not with anything that's, that's relative to your well-being. You're, you're ingesting things that are great for politics. 
great for the medical industry, great for the psychological industry, because as you're uh, taking up these titles, oh, you're fat, you're tired, you're depressed, you're bipolar. No, these are states are being created by the consumption, not only of consu consuming concepts, but of consuming the foods that the farmer tells you to eat. And everybody has to start realizing what they need. You crave things because you need stuff in whatever you're craving. I crave peppers all the time. I love jalapenos. I love... Um, my favorite is uh, chapeau peppers. They're just amazing peppers. They're loaded with vitamin C. And a chapeau itself, last year I had one for the first time ever. And immediately I had a niacin flush. It was loaded with niacin, natural niacin, as soon as it started breaking down. And it was such an amazing um, taste. But we only, as, as uh, grazers, going back to the origins of the biblical text and, and what we were, uh, prior to the time when we were taken by the Lord God, we were anthropo. We were the thing that creeps along. Well, we're, we're grazers like deer, and we pick things that we can reach. We don't pick things at the top of trees. We don't dig things up and eat uh, only carbohydrates or starches. And we don't normally eat uh, meat. Our teeth are flat. They, they crush things, so that means we eat a lot of seeds. We eat a lot of grains, and we eat a lot of these things that they've perverted and sold to us as commodities, such as wheat. Um, it's a grass seed. Rice, it's a, lot, a grass a lot seed. Of us, a lot of us, unfortunately, are feeding parasites, too. Right. A lot of the, I think a lot of the cravings we get for the, the junk, the sugars and everything, come from things like candida and other parasites that are just plaguing everybody. Absolutely, and yeast is, is growing because of the lactose balances in the body. Nobody's phosphorylasing. And, and yeah. uh, for yeast not to grow, yeast thrives on sugar. And so you want to uh, take your body back into more of an alkaline state <coughs> using alkaloids instead of sugar uh, uh, products like carbohydrates and, and things of that nature. Well, there's a, there's a reason that the uh, East India Company, <laughs> uh, its main staples were coffee, tea, and sugar. Yep, commodities. Uh, and, and, and opium, of course. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, all of those are, of course, uh, loaded with benzodiazepine. You're, you're loading up on Xanax. Soma theory itself, that's what that is. It's the theory on aging. The human body is made up of water and iron and salt. If you give it now a whole bunch of oxygen through carbohydrate mixes, you are rusting just like any other iron is uh, carbon based being. And Soma theory is a theory on aging. And, and Jesus was very, very profound when he talks about the eternal life and everlasting life and things of this nature. Because in the, in the absolute evidence that I've seen, we were taller. We were more streamlined, and we didn't have two of things. Now we've got two kidneys, and we've got something else that's, that's forming called an appendix. What is that going to be? Because the, the um, everything, uh, kidneys are poison filters. Why do we have poison filters? We've had to adapt to being poisoned for a very long time in order to have two kidneys, not just one kidney, but two kidneys. And then we've got another poison filter, the liver. We've got poison filters called the lungs. And, and these things, they don't uh, match up when you go through Gray's Anatomy. Those things, why do we have poison filters? Why do we have a, an immune system? And then we've got more uh, poison filters throughout our body. We've had to adapt to various onslaught upon us in order to have these things. I had a... I had a guy named uh, Mr. Oxygen on the show, actually, and um, he has had a lot of success with actually flooding the body with, uh, with I fact, that's the name of his book, flooding, flood, flood, flood Your Body with Oxygen or something like that. And, uh, you know, most disease-causing uh, agents, most, most, most of them are anaerobic. In other words, their cancers are anaerobic. Um, and, and cannot live in an oxygen-based, you know, atmosphere. So, so I think that one of the most uh, important things that people should be looking into is actually oxygen. Is our oxygen 
is being depleted <laughs> and we're purposefully doing it, uh, we're, it, it, it almost seems to me like we're changing our entire atmosphere and, and, and earth uh, for some reason that's unexplainable. Well, no, it's it's shock doctrine. I mean, now we're surrounded by these gravitational spheres, and they, they are created by shock doctrine. So the gases are actually locked up in little bubbles. And you can study the uh, this in the treatise on geophysics. Uh, it's an 11-volume set. It takes forever to read, but it's worth the read. And again, you go back to the Krebs cycle. Why is our metabolism based on citric acid? Well, citric acid burns off free radicals, and oxygen is a free radical. Why are they teaching us to avoid the sunlight? Why are they teaching us to avoid vitamin D? Well, this controls us in many, many ways, including psychologically, because if we're not exposed to vitamin D, somehow we become white. And if we are exposed just to vitamin D, we become black. And so this is a means, a mechanism of the same control that the same farmers have been doing for a very long time. Well, oxygen in the, in the proper form is not a quote-unquote free radical. It's, I mean, in, in the terms that you're, you're, you're stating, I, I understand what you are saying, but oxygen itself is not the demon. Um, well, we need more of hydrogen. We actually need more hydrogen, and, and when they're exposing us to this amount of oxygen, we're actually being suffocated, and, and you can see from the um, gravitational spheres, look out at the, at the horizon, look at a tree line. Why are those trees all flat-topped? Why are they stuck in that position? Because they have some force upon them. Now, gravity has been explained through science, of course, different than it is different than it is. You're dealing with pressure and force from above and that is what gravity is. There's something pushing on you from above. Well, what is the weight of oxygen? What is the weight of nitrogen? What is the weight of hydrogen? And why are we at this composition where now we're shorter than we used to be? We're not streamlined. The trees are all flat top. Something's impeding their movement. And the trees are so profound. They're showing us so many things. Not only are they flat topped and they're controlled in their environment like a, a goldfish in a uh, aquarium, their root balls go down sometimes 30 and 50 feet under the ground. So they're trying to grow, but they can't grow up, so they're growing downward. Why is this? Who's doing this? Who's controlling this? And a lot of it you can see with the cloud seeding, the use of the control of water, the fall of water, which is what? H2O. In these concentrations, the oxygen is combining with the hydrogen, and we're not getting the amount of hydrogen that we need for thought. If you look at what we require as humanity, what, what life requires, hydrogen, why is a tree producing oxygen? Why now do we have lice? Why do we have fleas? Why do we have mosquitoes? And why do we have mushrooms? Each one of those consumes oxygen and spits out uh, CO2, CO3, whatever. Why do we have these things? Why are we adapting in that direction so that now we have different variants on life that are conducive to less oxygenated environment? And here we are, we're calling them vermin or whatever else. We didn't have these things back then. Why is life adapting to get rid of oxygen? And that's something that a lot of everybody needs to realize. Why are these things occurring? Why are we suffering from certain dis-ease, discomfort? Why are we not metabolizing the way that we should be? Because in our natural state, you would be not metabolizing as to your nature. There's nothing impeding that, except for whatever is being breathed in or consumed in some way. And we have to really delve into what those things are. And, and, you know, as Jesus said, keep a really open mind because things get really creepy at the end here where you start realizing things and it's it's very hard to swallow. He says that in math, or, um, Revelation. And um, he said, look, you're going to be offered a, school, or a scroll at one point and it's going to be very, very sweet on the lips, but it's going to be very bitter on the tummy. It's going to be very hard to swallow. But if you can overcome this, you've overcome all things, and that's when heaven occurs. That's when you, you are at your kingdom. And there's so many things that 
you know, years ago, I used to kick and scream. I used to just throw fits. I'm, no, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not, I'm done. I'm retiring. I'm, I don't want to see this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. And thankfully, I had, and I'll just say it clearly, my teachers were hard asses. They warned me in the beginning. We're, we are harsh taskmasters. And I thought, no, no, I love education. I love knowledge. Nobody can be as harsh, you know. And, and I found out immediately, oh, yes, you know. And Jeff was telling me to get my head out of my rectum, you know. And, and um, But it, it's, it's well worth it. You Once you realize all of these things and how suckered we are, it pisses you off. And that's what it says in Revelation. When you're able to open that book and you realize what's going on, your wrath is going to be made known and, and you bring down hell upon your oppressors. I'd say it's about time for that, don't you, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. More than well past time because this is absolutely horrifying what they've done. It's not just a psychological construct. It's a medical. It's the criminal aspects. It's the morality. And all of these things are conducive to farming. And once you divest yourself of all that possesses you, there can be no farm. Yeah, and, and we've also reached the, the <laughs> limits, uh, well, the supposed limits, the supposed wall of what goes too far. We've, we've now created these chimeric uh, life forms. We've, we've added the human DNA and the cow DNA, the human DNA and the frog DNA, and they are now literally creating this, these just horrible, horrible life forms that um, that are not human and not you know not animal they're a mixture and that was the that was sort of the final frontier of, of ethics and and uh, you know that was the that was the point when it was time to say okay all right enough's enough but that's already passed now right and now what what do we what do we, what's the limit i mean what what is the new limit since we didn't do anything about um about the fact that these crazy people are, are creating hell on earth that they're taking brains and making them live outside the body which i can't think of a more horrible life than that sort of you know creation uh, you know what, what what is the limit now and I'm, I, I hate to say it but I, I'm pretty sure there isn't one. Well, there wasn't one in Nazi Germany, and everybody got to watch what, what happens. And that's something that, you know, yes, that's a slap in the face for the majority of our listeners. But if there's no bar there, if there's no um, standard, then Nazi Germany happens, and Cambodia and, happens. And, and, and I don't think it's... it's I, I think that uh, that was more of a lesson in... Uh, incrementalism. See, I'm, my, my fear is that things aren't happening quick enough so that people aren't saying, oh, wait, where did that come from? No, it's happening in an incremental basis. And so the next final frontier has very well been stated by so many now is this communitarian uh, transhumanism. And, and I just don't think that there's going to be an event that's big enough to, to to grab people's attention and it's just it's it's like watching the grass grow basically you just don't notice it and by the time you do notice it it's okay it's already happened so we're not really able to stop it and then the next thing happens oh wow well, look at that they created that a month ago i didn't even know about it oh oh i'm too busy you know the, the, there's there's i don't think there's going to be an event big enough to to warrant uh, this this sort of response that, that 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 when the bar is you know the bar is set we're not going to go we're not going to let them do anything you know worse than this and yet that's all of those things have already been accomplished and we're we're on the road to a much 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 more hellish world than I can can even imagine at this point. And, and that scares me right and that and that's that only that's only if humanity doesn't follow the rules of Jesus and Jesus simply said yes. take up your cross and follow me that did not refer to the psychological construct the inside me that referred to the person in front of you that referred to right now in Gaza if you tolerate this and you don't speak up for your fellow human being it happens the tolerance cannot be you know, ongoing, this cannot be tolerated. If you don't stand up for your brothers and sisters in Gaza and your brothers and sisters in Iraq and Iran, in India, 
Aw, oh, that's our time for tonight. Thank you, Clint. Be well. And, and don't miss the show next week, folks. Uh, be well, everybody. Thank you, Clint. Take care.